So since Selena Vega left WWE in late 2020, if you remember all that stuff about uh, Twitch and the third party work, where WWE wanted their cut, the talents were pissed about it. Both sides had some legitimate gripes here. Nonetheless, uh, that's what ultimately led to her being shown the door or leaving however you want to put it. Uh, there's been talk about where she was going to go and what she was going to do next. Was she going to go to AEW? Was she going to focus on other things outside of wrestling? Was she eventually going to work her way back to WWE? And we know we have seen some reports in re recent weeks talking about that Zelina Vega was in fact going to be back with WWE, was already back with WWE, and just biding her time until they um, brought her out. And we found out Friday night on SmackDown that Zelina Vega is indeed back with WWE. Number one, proves a couple of things. Number one, so much for that unionization talk, huh? <laughs> Those beliefs matter only until you look at your bank account and you realize you need more money. Then they can, as is human nature, we kind of put all those beliefs and morals and uh, views to the side for the almighty dollar. It's just the reality. I'm not giving her grief about it because it's, it's what we would all fucking do, honestly, if we're in that same situation. There are two types of people, you know, in 99.99% .99 of the cases. And please, best believe, you're not one of the exceptions. If you got the opportunity to make that type of money, you're taking the damn job, regardless of what your beliefs are. It's just the reality of it. It's just the reality of it. <laughs> but so much for that, huh? Oh, let me guess. She's going to change it from the inside. Ah, oh, bullshit. And to the whole thing about the Twitch and the third party stuff, you know, how does that work now? Like, sure, it seems like he kicked up a whole bunch of fuss and ado over nothing. And then you also get to the piece of, okay, well, they just fired her dude, excuse me, released Alistair Black a couple of months ago. Does this mean he's going to come back into the fold? This is again where you just kind of get into the whole premise and concept of this stuff isn't really well thought out within WWE anymore. You're going to get rid of somebody just to bring them back a few months later, potentially bring back somebody else that you literally were investing television time on and then nothing ever manifests out of it and then you bring in that person back. Like it just, it just makes absolutely no sense. But nonetheless, nonetheless, Zelina Vega is officially back in WWE, making her appearance last night on SmackDown. Sonya Deville brings her out. They do a little back and forth. Zelina Vega cuts a promo, which ultimately leads to Liv Morgan coming out, leading to a match between those two that Liv Morgan actually won. And I got a lot to say about this return of Zelina Vega. The one thing I will not complain about, though, as much as this probably throws a lot of people off, is the fact that Zelina Vega lost last night. That actually made sense to me. That actually was okay. That actually is something different and frankly refreshing. It takes a moment when you say, well, you brought her back just to lose, but we one of the oldest tropes and tried and true played out bullshit things that professional wrestling does is that when somebody debuts, they have to win, and then they have to string together a series of victories, and you're like, that's how you build people up. No, because that just makes everybody feel the fucking same. That's just not the way it works in any real sport. You know, when you think about real sports, you certainly have those, that hot shot from the very beginning, because they're just so superiorly talented to anybody else, or they get all the breaks, or any number of things. You get those that come in as rookies and they have some good performances and some bad performances. And then you have those rookies that come in and they struggle and it takes a while. But it's like for every single damn person that WW brings in that's new, especially if they're putting any type of emphasis behind them, they've always got to win their first couple of matches. And it's kind of lame. It's kind of lazy. It's kind of played out. I actually think it's refreshing to see you bring somebody who hasn't been there in several damn months and in their first match they lose. To me, shit, that's fucking 100% believable. You can talk about wisdom of it all you want. Believable it was. So that I won't complain about. I expect and understand a lot of people did or will. Not this guy. There are other things about this return, though, on Friday night that really, really rubbed me the wrong way. And it all comes down to presentation. Presentation is so critical. Presentation is key. Presentation makes 
all of the difference. All of the difference. And they dropped the ball so massively here. So, so massively. And no, it's not because Vince was sending a message to Zelina, union my ass, you're going to lose this match. Hey, maybe that may have been his whole motto. Either way, I think that actually worked. But it even comes down to the way they bring her out. And Sonny Deville's announcing her, and out comes Zelina Vega. And this is where you hate to sometimes say, well, the way it used to be, or how somebody else used to do it. But back in the day, seriously, when you would have a JR on commentary, and somebody like a Zelina Vega would come, and they would debut, or they would return... He would make a big fucking deal out of it. There would be energy. There would be emotion. There would be passion. You see how you even think that I have emotion and passion around this right now when really it's just me cranking up the volume on my voice. The point I'm getting at is it makes you feel like something different is happening. It makes you feel like you need to stand up and take attention because this, this right here is something big. This, this right here is a fucking moment. And instead of that happening, Michael Cole basically null sold it on fucking commentary. He's like, oh yeah, it's Zelina Vega. What in the fuck are you doing here? It's not like she's just a random person that you just brought up from NXT. And you're assuming most of your SmackDown audience doesn't know who the hell she is, which you would have the right to do since NXT does a fraction of the viewers that SmackDown does. But you're trying to hype this up as a big return, and you basically get crickets from the commentator, and this is a fucking problem. That's why Pat McAfee is so refreshing on commentary, because he gets excited. He has energy, he has passion, and it shows. Michael Cole has been doing this so goddamn long, a lot of times it feels like he leaves his emotion and his passion and his energy at home. This is a moment that calls for it. If you want to present her in a way that you're supposed to take notice and attention, which is exactly what this segment was designed to fucking do, that is not how you do it. Guarantee you wouldn't do that shit if it was John Cena. You'd be sitting there, nah! But it's a fucking Zelina Vega and you're sitting there, she's coming back after several months. She's getting this shot at money in the bank and you're just nothing. That's pathetic. She deserved better. Michael Cole, you know better. WWE, this merited and deserved better. It's fucking ridiculous. And then there's also that presentation piece of, as I was watching it last night, and she was standing next to Sonya Deville, and I realize Sonya's a little bit bigger on the lady side of things, but holy Christ, did Zelina Vega look tiny. And I know what you're going to have. You're going to automatically have the people, well, size doesn't matter, size doesn't matter. But sometimes it does, though. Sometimes it absolutely does. And when you're trying to bring somebody back like a big deal, when you're trying to big somebody back, like they matter, you need to present them in a way that matters. And having her stand next to Sonya Deville where she looks at least six to eight inches shorter ain't getting the job done, pal. When your on-screen authority figure looks more imposing and more impressive than the talent that you're bringing back, that's a problem. A major, significant problem. Because if anything, it makes you say, I'd rather see this bitch wrestle than this bitch. And she's so fucking tiny. Like if I used to sit there and rag on an AJ Lee, why wouldn't I rag on a Selena Vega? Well, the difference being is Selena actually looks like a grown woman, but in terms of size and everything else, it's pretty fucking similar. And if anything, it's a reminder to me that not everybody needs to wrestle. Zelina Vega is probably much better suited to be a heater for somebody. She is much better suited to be a manager because she can talk. She has character and personality. And some of you are going to say, well, she can go in the ring, so we want to see her. Again, not everybody needs to fucking wrestle. Furthermore, on top of that, you could still incorporate her into matches by mixed tags and etc. You got things you could do, but she looks so fucking tiny. What are you going to do? Have her go up against Bianca Belair? We're going to fart at that one. Sasha Banks is already pushing it. Now you're talking about Zelina Vega? 
But again, instead of me focusing on Zelina Vega and the return, it is entirely, solely, and exclusively WWE's fault that I'm looking at these other fucking things. If Michael Cole can't be bothered enough to care about this return, then why the fuck should I or anybody else? If the WWE can't do a better job of presenting their talent in a certain way that makes them feel like a bigger deal, then why the hell should I or anybody else feel like they're a bigger deal? We'll see what they do with Selena Vega. It's ironic to me that the one thing that doesn't bother me about this is that the fact that she lost her return match. And I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me because they're so programmed to this in wrestling and so used to it is that you always got to win your debut or return match. You always got to get a little bit. And, and I just think that's a tired, played out, bullshit way to look at wrestling that needs to kick fucking rocks. It's everything else about it that just feel, feels really bad and felt like a pretty big miss last night. But you let me know what you think. Tell me in the comments. Flaming keyboard fingers of fire if you must. And make sure you smash that subscribe button and you follow me on Twitter. All right, I'm out.